people aren't working in a vacuum. Um, this is to all of the faculty. But um, so those that were recognized this year with uh, tenure and promotion, starting in alphabetical order with Nate Holdren. And this, so every year, I should mention, every year when I present tenure and promotion cases to the board, uh, first, I would have to say I have to explain what tenure is. And then after that, and I, and I have it down to like a elevator speech, um, but after that, um, what I have shared with the board is what I'm reading to you now. Um, after looking at your, not only your CV and your letters from your dean, from your um, tenure okay, promotion so committee. Can see. Yeah, so I'm in the middle of a meeting right now. And so I just carry this in here with me. And so I'm just gonna put this. Lawrence, uh, you need to mute yourself. Oh. <laughs> um, so what I'm reading to you is what the board reads about each of you. Um, and so starting with Nate Holdren, assistant professor, currently assistant professor of law, politics and society, uh, recommended for promotion to associate professor with tenure. He joined Drake in the fall of 2015. His teaching, he is firmly committed to self-reflective practices in service of student learning and engagement. And I mentioned self-reflection quite a bit in a lot of people's files. That means you consider um, your teaching to be so important that you pay attention to feedback that you get from students, from colleagues, from your dean, and you work to be better. Um, that's what I call a self-reflective practice. Um, Nate is dedicated to student success, compassionate and empathetic, while also supporting students to achieve high standards of rigor. He gives a student-centered approach. He connects with students around issues that need and needs that others in the department don't share or meet. Uh, nothing against the other members. He just brings um, something special. As, do, as does everyone else. Oh boy, I'm not making it any easier for myself. Um, he, uh, he has special qualities and we all recognize that. He brings a related but different theoretical perspective to his courses. Um, themes of the student comments, including first year seminar students, the topics that are controversial are engaging and, and he develops civil discourse um, and that is essential for democratic participation. The students feel challenged in an, in an environment that is both rigorous and supportive. Nate's a reflective practitioner, details, detailing steps he's taken to develop as a teacher. He's engaged himself in all manner of professional development opportunities. His peer evaluations indicate he's demonstrated a high degree of trust and respect between students, even while discussing difficult topics, and he empowers students. He exemplifies content confidence and process confidence in his teaching. His scholarship is high quality and insightful. And many of you know, he just published a very important book um, and received an award for that. Um, his ability to write as a public intellectual in contribution to important theoretical and contemporary debates. His external reviewers and senior scholars hold Nate's scholarship in very high esteem. His book will be received as a major statement in law and society scholarship that will establish Professor Holdren as a major scholar in that field. Um, he's productive, intellectually ambitious, and a creative scholar, and um, he will only get better. Um, he has a very heavy advising load, yet is tireless and extremely effective, genuinely interested in learning about his students and in helping them learn about themselves. He's been a crew mentor. He contributes to the profession through manuscript review, discussants and organizers of panels. He contributes to the college serving on important committees. He contributes to the university and he, he has a commitment to institution building. So congratulations, Nate, very well deserved recognition. Um, next is Peter Levi, Assistant Professor of Environmental Science and Sustainability, uh, recommended promotion to Associate Professor with tenure. Um, his teaching is, he is a highly effective and popular teacher who is skilled and deeply committed to student learning, 
um, Peer's comment on Peter's full mastery of the discipline. Students greatly appreciate him as a professor with comments such as, he's incredibly knowledgeable and well-versed in the subject matter. He's very passionate about the subject he teaches and he cares about students as individuals. Uh, he builds courses and pedagogy based on intended outcomes and utilizes immersive teaching as a way of developing critical thinking. Um, he uh, has strong rapport with students, learns their names and hometowns to provide examples that will connect with students' experiences and lived understanding of the discipline. He is an engaging and, infect and effective lecturer. Uh, he is also a reflective practitioner. He has a willingness and ability to incorporate feedback in his work. He has an impressive record of mentoring in his research lab. Um, he's published abstracts with 14 undergraduate co-authors since 2016. We all know how much extra time that takes. He has an impressive publication record, um, including top international peer-reviewed journals. I'm sorry, uh, I didn't just... Uh... Oh, do you have a longer meeting planned, Gesina? I'm sorry, you could have just interrupted me. Um, uh, uh, well, uh, this will take about 20 minutes. Will that fit into your schedule? Do you have, are you able to fit me in here? Sorry, I was muted. I said, sure, sure, sure. We will okay. adjust at the other end. We will adjust at the other end. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I just uh, um, appreciate so much, and I'm sorry for uh, going on and on, but I, I honestly do think this is just so important. The, uh, the external reviewers for Peter expressed enthusiastic and positive assessments regarding the quality and quantity of Peter's scholarship and collaborations with internationally acclaimed scholars. He is a true teacher, scholar, mentor. Um, he has um, outstanding service. I'll try to limit that. Um, and so congratulations, Peter, and certainly um, our, our best wishes for continued success. Yasmina Madden, um, Assistant Professor of Ling English, um, promotion to Associate Professor with tenure. Yasmina is highly effective and accomplished instructor and mentor made important contributions to the curriculum, designing new classes that are fundamental to the Women's and Gender Studies program, the Honors program, the Drake curriculum, and the majors in English and writing. Her peers say that she provides the theoretical foundation and facilitation of the workshop atmosphere to the benefit of students. She's a highly skilled and dedicated teacher who guides her students towards enhanced understanding of writing and engages deeply with them. And she's a remarkably conscientious and thoughtful teacher who models the high standards that she expects from and enables her students to achieve. She's a reflective practitioner. She's redesigned her courses, choosing materials and texts that include a diversity of authors and experiences. She's changed the format to create a workshop or studio atmosphere and revised her pedagogy to make students part of the learning and growth that includes, that occurs in the classroom. Um, she, uh, students comments that she challenged them to give their best. She encouraged them to participate and take risks and she, re she rewards them. Uh, she's rewarded by the improvements they see in their writing. She, uh, Yasmina is a prolific writer. Many of her works have been reprinted or chosen as finalists in national writing competitions. She has prestigious recognition as a creative writer. She is also a teacher scholar and external reviewers comment her, commend her complex representation of cultural identity, her beautiful style and her craftsmanship. Thank you, Yasmina. Congratulations. Um, Inval Mazar, um, as promoted to associate professor with tenure. Um, Imbal is engaging, effective, and caring interdisciplinary educator in both language and culture. She's a reflective practitioner addressing student challenges and committed to her own growth. She provided increased student opportunities for interpersonal conversational speaking. She's enhanced the curriculum with strong course development, connecting with colleagues across campus uh, to provide courses for healthcare providers, 
Student, students comment that they grow as Spanish speakers and as world citizens. She's been a Crew Scholars mentor, mentor and an informal mentor and advisor for dozens of students continuing long after they graduate. From her dean, her greatest strength as a teacher and a thread that runs through her teaching narrative, course designs and through departmental and college reviews are the opportunities she provides for her students to learn Spanish through community engagement her scholarship is interdisciplinary, focused on service learning and healthcare among Spanish speaking populations. Um, she is heavily engaged in the scholarship of teaching and learning. She's a public scholar whose work transcends the ivory tower and has impact. Um, external reviewers also praise her ability to put into practice the kind of collaborative and engaging pedagogy to which so many of us aspire, but so rarely achieve. Congratulations, Imbal. Yeah, that's great. Um, Chris Porter, um, promoted to associate professor with tenure. His teaching is exemplary. He's a reflective practitioner, constantly strives to live up to his own expectations. He is enthusiastic about course materials, teaching to students at all levels and applications of what is being learned. He approaches all aspects of his teaching with energy and commitment, if you know Chris. Um, student evaluations are overwhelmingly positive, the best professor and teacher I ever had, and it's funny how many of you students say this about. He's a great professor, give him a raise. He's the most enthusiastic professor I have. Peer evaluations are equally enthusiastic. Um, Chris has changed students' lives and opened their eyes. Um, that's, a, that's a great testament. Um, he also has tried some really innovative ways of teaching. His scholarship, he has an outstanding record and has established himself as a highly respected scholar who collaborates with some of the most prominent researchers in his field. He's earned an international reputation as an influential and groundbreaking scholar. Um, he includes students as co-investigators and co-authors and um, has been very interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary in his research. Congratulations, Chris. And Jeanette Tran is the final, last but not least, um, promoted to associate professor with tenure. Um, she is a strong teacher who excels in the classroom and builds relationships with her students. She's a reflective practitioner, designs and continuously refines classes for relevance. She takes seriously connecting with students on an individual level. Students appreciate her genuine care for each of them as individuals. And notably, Jeanette responds to student essays with individually addressed letters with careful feedback on their writing, emblematic of her intentional and engaged teaching style. She is a masterful facilitator of class discussions through creating an inclusionary environment. Um, peer observations reflect on her success as an effective teacher. Students enthusiastically discuss their personal connection to the materials they read in her class and remark how excited they are to make those connections. Um, her scholarship is important and timely work on questions of inclusion and exclusion of literary characters and texts. Um, external reviewers note the significance and timeliness of her contribution, her effectiveness as a critic, her ability to make Shakespeare accessible to larger audiences, and her skillful historic framing. Uh, other external reviewers praise her scholarship as focused, impressive, consistent, and promising, thought-provoking, wide-ranging, and important. She's a scholar who makes the marginal voices central and her works in progress are poised to contribute to a new understanding of Shakespeare in light of social justice issues in the 21st century. Congratulations, Jeanette. Okay, and now the, the faculty members who have received promotion to full professor. Um, again, this is not um, something that I think of as uh, something that people receive for being in a seat for 12 years or 14 years or 20 years. This is a significant recognition of your contribution to the university and to your discipline. I, this is 
a significant honor, and I hope every one of you feel this um, in, in your uh, promotion by the board. Uh, first, uh, Ann Carvero in um, the, the School of Music. Um, uh, peers indicate Anne is an ex excellent and highly effective teacher. She's effusive with praise, particularly for her pedagogy. Uh, they are. <laughs> her peers are effusive with praise, particularly for her pedagogy. She continuously works to hone her skills. She has a, an excellent balance of constructive criticism and positive reinforcement. Students learn tools necessary to self-diagnose problems. Um, she has highly positive student evaluations. The professor is a once in a lifetime gem of a teacher. She pushed me to limits I never thought existed and is the reason I'm going to one of the top schools in the country for music. She has recognized expertise, created the Drake Opera Theater, mm -hmm. provides a positive and nurturing environment. She's an enthusiastic and passionate educator. Her scholarship exceeds the standard. She is an accomplished mezzo-soprano, and external reviewers uniformly praise the quality and quantity of her creative output. She is uh, her riveting performer of this challenging music holding the stage without effort, sings like an angel. Uh, great depth and breadth in her scholarly pursuits, which includes publication, performance, master classes, invited presentation, stage and musical direction, accompanying, recording and adjudication. Congratulations, Anne. Um, Brad Kroll uh, in religion was promoted to full professor. He is a conscientious and devoted teacher. Uh, his project-based pedagogy related to the Jonestown Affair um, and the Effective Digital Humanities Project. Students praise his ability to develop their critical thinking skills, facilitate open-ended and substantive discussions, and deliver effective lectures. Um, he is able to support students in dense and difficult uh, materials. He's a reflective practitioner and has shown significant growth uh, a product of significant investments of time, energy, and effort. Um, his, uh, the methodolo methodological design behind his pedagogy is masterful. Uh, he is an excellent and successful teacher. Um, his scholarship is in the first century BCE Assyrian Empire, and his forthcoming book uh, is an interdisciplinary approach. The external reviewers describe the book as impressive, original, and will become the to-go-to work for the next generation of scholars in the field. Um, they consider Brad's work as a major scholarly achievement, and um, his, his path to, is active to contribute in the field. Um, so congratulations, Brad, on your uh, promotion to full professor. Mira Eaton, promoted to professor of biology. Uh, his teaching, he is remarkably effective and successful. His teaching philosophy, he strives to develop an atmosphere of respect for students by promptly addressing questions and concerns. He has boundless enthusiasm and passion in the classroom and engages and challenges students. He models scientific thinking in the classroom and challenges them to think critically. He's a reflective practitioner. Students appreciate his patience and care for their learning success. Um, he is a strong mentor of undergraduate student research. He has a productive record of research, publishes in top international journals with moderate to high impact factors. He involves undergraduate students as co-authors, um, has received multiple grants, he is positioned as one of the premier ornithologists in the state of Iowa. External reviewers note the significance of his work as an evolutionary biologist, and he has impressive productivity given his teaching load. Congratulations, Muir. And finally, Mary McCarthy. Last but not least, uh, Mary. Mary was promoted to Professor of International Relations. Um, Mary has clear mastery and passion for her discipline. She teaches in, in so many different inter interdisciplinary areas. 
Her strengths are in instructional design, course materials, learning outcomes, innovative pedagogies, such as simulations and service learning and evidence-based assessments to determine relative effectiveness. That is a reflective scholar. She fosters a professional and respectful atmosphere for student learning. Peers are impressed with the breadth and depth of student contributions in her class and noticed how successfully she switched from in-person classes to remote delivery in March of 2020. Student evaluations from spring semester 2020 confirm the smooth transition and praise her ability to continue the class virtually. She is very innovative in the classroom and is clearly committed to teaching. Mary's scholarship is strong and um, she shows an ongoing intellectual curiosity and an intentional approach to scholarship. Her research agenda yields academic works that are illuminating contributions to the field. She is a consistently, she shows consistent scholarly productivity and her future scholarly activities are in the works with a path laid out for continued impact. External reviewers praise her clear articulation of important questions. Her fields of research are urgent and she has pursued her scholarly career and publication with deep awareness and empathy. Um, they attest to the high quality and substantive methodology of her work. Um, she has received many notable uh, accolades for her scholarship. Congratulations, Mary, very well deserved. And congratulations, everyone. I, again, I am so proud of, of the work that all of you do. And um, this is just a testament to the latest cohort of, of those of you being recognized. So thanks for letting me take over your meeting, Gesina. Uh, I appreciate, I appreciate the, how hard this year has been and just uh, being able to recognize those head of, head, that have received tenure and promotion this year. Thank you. Absolutely. It was amazing and it's amazing to hear it all in one long, you know, one after the other. It's really quite astonishing. Um, and I'm so proud and so happy. So thank you, Sue, for this very special yes. Oh, my presentation. Pleasure. Yeah, much appreciated. Good. Good. So let me give you a quick overview um, of what else we have planned for today. Um, so in the, we have a lot of flexibility built and that's one thing we learned from, from this whole year. So just a quick overview. We'll start with um, some more recognitions or we continue with some more recognitions. Um, that it will be followed by a couple of reports that I think of just brief things of um, most important happenings this year from the perspective of Faculty Senate and then and as Council. And then I wanted to give you a few updates. And then in the second part, we, as you know, we want, I wanted to have a little a conversation with all of you about um, the uh, online teaching, the good, the bad, and the next steps. So we will, and there was that Padlet, and I thank uh, you for contributing. That helps us just structure and prepare for the discussion a little bit better. We also have some of our champions present an update on the big ideas that I don't think um, uh, we haven't have heard, or the general faculty has heard as much about um, in the last uh, few months or so. So that's the overview of today. So let's keep going here. We will start next with uh, two. Uh, recognitions of some really dear uh, friends and colleagues that are no longer with us. Klaus, would you please start? Yes, I'm going to start uh, and I will paste two uh, little links into the chat. There's a little bit of luck. I can do this. And uh, uh, easier said than done. So let me see, share. Who is sharing now? I would like to share. So there we go, share. Good. And now we need the chat. Okay, and I type it in. That's it. Okay, so um, yeah, it's a bit sad um, that what did I have to do this now, but um, uh, Oleg uh, Zazzarini was a senior researcher in our department. Chances are actually that you guys never met him. He was uh, quite by himself, sort of, except maybe for a smoke on the sidewalk of Forest Avenue. So you can read about him in the two links uh, that I'm pasting into the chat. And uh, one of them I should, should be on your screen. The first is a tribute um, uh, that uh, was published by the Division of Atomic Molecular and Optical Physics of the American Physical Society, uh, written by Charlotte Fuse Fischer. 
uh, a real giant in our field and one of our good friends from uh, Moscow State University. Uh, the other one is a Wikipedia article that Charlotte actually wrote, and I should say that she also made a stock gift of about $10,000 to Drake uh, Observatory in Oleg's honor, so she really appreciated his work. Um, Oleg came to Drake in 2003 through one of my grants and was meant for three years, but he did so well that he ended up leading or co-leading grant projects that brought over a million dollars plus some overhead to Drake. <laughs> and uh, in fact, it was even more because many of my projects completely depended on his involvement. Uh, over these last 17 years, he was a cornerstone of my research group. I counted it and we co-authored 126 publications in peer-reviewed journals together. Uh, many of these projects involved collaborators from all over the world, um, US, Europe, Australia, and Asia. So Oleg was really a great example of that true science has no borders. Uh, some of um, the highlights of his career, he was elected to fellowship in the American Physical Society, which is a big deal. And I read the citation just so they know what we are talking about here. For the development of the B spline R matrix method with non-orthogonal orbital sets for atomic structure calculation of exceptional exceptional accuracy and benchmark calculations for excitation and ionization of complex atoms and ions by photon and electron impact. So in case you want to, to know what that means, we can have coffee one of these days. Um, his current age index is 38. That means that 38 of his papers were cited 38 or more times. 135 of his papers have been cited 10 times or more. And at the current rate, his work is being cited nearly twice every day. So he was a researcher with all his heart, but he also taught for our department. And in addition to senior levels classes, he, his most notable contribution was a new course on computational physics, physics that he developed and taught multiple times. And not having such a course was a big gap in our program, but now we have it with all his materials. So I'll finish with a mentioning the very last project that Oleg worked on until a few days before his death, and is um, electron collisions with ytterbium atoms. So that might sound an exotic topic, but there is some good reason behind it. Um, it turns out that a group at Oak Ridge National Laboratory needs such data to understand how to enrich ytterbium before converting it into what's called lutetium. Um, and that's not to build a weapon, but it's actually to treat a variety of cancers, in particular pancreatic cancer. And since Oleg died of cancer, it's quite meaningful. Um, so his suite of computer programs is widely considered as the most promising approach to generate the enormous amount of data that these people need. And now it's left to Catherine Hamilton, one of my postdocs, and me to try to complete this work. It's not going to be simple, but we'll do our best um, to represent him well. So it's one of the many examples where Oleg's work is not just important for fundamental science. The data that he produced affect many fields beyond atomic physics, you know, such as astrophysics, planetary physics, atmospheric physics, plasma physics, chemical physics, nuclear physics, and ultimately medical physics. So one of my colleagues from the Naval Research Lab in Washington, D.C. would say, Oleg actually did something useful. And uh, with that, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Klaus, a real giant um, and a dear, dear friend and close colleague to several of you, especially in the physics department. So um, thank you. We have one more uh, loss to mourn, and um, Karen, would you mind taking um, the next one? Certainly. Um, Gazina asked me to speak about my colleague, Kurt Cardwell, who passed away unexpectedly on January 7th. Um, it was the first week of J term, and he was teaching one of his favorite courses to share with students, um, the Cold War through film. Kurt and I joined the faculty at Drake the same semester 
in the fall of 2005. And during his nearly 16 years at Drake, I estimate looking at his course load that he taught nearly 3000 students. Passionate about history is the way most students described him. He loved telling stories, especially the kinds of stories that challenged students' assumptions about the past. In one of the last email messages that he sent me, he described how happy he was with a new course that he had developed on US religious history. And the last line of the email was quintessentially curt. He summed up the student's learning experience, mm -hmm. writing, and I quote, many minds are being blown. <laughs> Religious history was a growing interest of Kurtz, but it wasn't his field of research. Um, his field was Cold War diplomatic history. And his first book was about US rearmament after the Second World War and the uh, development of the global capitalist economy. He really reveled in exploring big questions about power. And when he died, he was working on a study of the Cold War and the interstate highway system. And when I think about the highway system and the construction of I-235 and urban renewal and Black Lives Matter, it makes me really sad that that study will remain for someone else to do. When Kurt came to Drake, he brought his family to Drake too. His wife, Stephanie, works in the College of Business and Public Administration. Some of you may know his daughter, Lennon Cardwell, who graduated in May, 2020 with a double major in history and sociology. Lennon is working for Easter Seals in the metro area right now. Next week, on Thursday, May 6, we're holding a small memorial for Kurt, partly on Zoom and partly in Levitt Hall. And I wanted to mention that the memorial is now entered in the university calendar. And after I finish speaking, I'll put a link into the chat, um, should you wish to attend on Zoom. Um, on May 7, dead day, uh, Kurt will be buried in Adel at the Iowa Veterans Cemetery. Kurt was a veteran. Uh, he began, right before he began graduate work, he was a member of the U.S. Army and for a time stationed in Germany. So Kurt's death it was a shock to all of us who knew him. And I wanna take this opportunity to express my appreciation for several colleagues who really stepped up to help me in those first weeks of frantically figuring out what to do. Um, first of all, Dr. Robert Collis, who took over his J-term course that was in progress. It was an absolutely unenviable task that Rob took on with calm grace and tremendous success. I also want to thank Dr. Natalie Bayer, who helped communicate with students and parents agitated and anxious to know how all those J term courses at all those J term and spring courses were going to be covered. And I also want to thank my department's assistant, Karen McKinnon Cipher, without whom I don't know what I would have done. She helped me navigate HR and hire three new adjuncts in less than two weeks. Honestly, Kurt's death has been hard for me to process, especially being remote this year. I walked by his office in Meredith Hall. Numerous times, excuse me. So many times every day for almost 16 years. And I know many, many, many of us did too. We still haven't taken the nameplate down off his office door. And I'm sorry for, you 
Yeah. I'm not sure how we'll feel passing by his office when we return to on-campus operations in the fall, when his office is no longer his office and his big booming voice isn't audible all the way down the hall. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, he left a huge hole in the college and in, in the department and in the world for sure. And so thank you for remembering him. I wanted to share with you that we um, will bestow the title of the Professor Emeritus posthumously on Kurt, Kurt Cartwell. And um, this is kind of the first announcement of that. So I wanted to share that with you all. And I'm, I hope that will mean something to his family as well. And as we remember him. Good. On that, um, it's, it's hard to switch, uh, you know, from this sad but sad celebration to more positive celebrations. Um, and I have asked a few. We have several wonderful colleagues who we are losing this year, not because of a tragedy, but because of a new phase in life, and that is retirement. And um, we will uh, have. Uh, several here today who will be recognized for that. And I want to ask um, Kayla to move on to the next slide maybe. And then we will start with Dan Alexander. So Gazzini, you want me to check about Dan for Yes, for please. All right, so, um, so how, my name is Tim Burness, um, and uh, I'm just going to say a couple of words about about Dan, and uh, I don't I don't know if Dan has realized this, but uh, I've been using him as a kind of informal uh, career coach over the past 15 years that I've been at Drake. And I haven't quite come to grips with the fact that uh, he won't be around the office as much anymore. But I'm hopeful that uh, the late night emails and Zoom sessions still won't end. In many ways, uh, Dan's experiences have provided an excellent model for the kinds of well-rounded, lifelong learners that we aspire our students to become. Uh, his undergraduate major was in English. And he came to mathematics later than most uh, that make a career out of studying or teaching mathematics. Uh, he is an author of two books. He was awarded the Arts and Sciences Outstanding Teacher of the Year, uh, 2016 Stallmaker Lecture. Uh, Dan's contributions to teaching, research, and service are excellent examples of a student-focused, selfless professor that embodies the mission and purpose of Drake. Uh, Dan's recent service lows where I think his leadership and character are most apparent. He's chaired search committees for new faculty, as well as being part of a restructuring of the mathematics curriculum. Uh, he's helped me by tag teaming the department chair position, which include meetings and budgets and recruiting and transfers and troubled students and new policies and tenure and new faculties and offices and all those things, right? So um, his experience is also with the, the p and committee were a source of wisdom for all of us that went through that process. All the selfless things he's done, he's really taken in stride. So, I know he really cares about the university and the students and the faculty here. And I want to let you know, Dan, that you'll be greatly missed. Congratulations on your retirement. Thank you and congratulations, Dan. And then the next, um, Brian Sanders, Professor Emeritus. And I think Chris is going to do this one. Well, I think I'm going to. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. So Brian, since you came to Drake in 1989 as an assistant professor, you've been an integral part of our department and the Drake community. It really is impossible to capture in just a few minutes the many ways you've positively impacted our lives professionally and personally. Through your mentoring, your friendship, your leadership, you've helped shape who we are and helped make, helped make us better. We will miss you. We can't enumerate all of the different ways that we'll miss you, uh, but we do wanna highlight a few of those ways. So on behalf of the department, I share with you a list of top 10 reasons we will miss you in no particular order. Number one, your thoughtful counsel on difficult problems. Number two, your veggie pizza at potlucks. Number three, your cheerful, authentic good mornings. Number four, your voice of calm through difficult situations. Five, your ability to cite chapter and verse of the faculty manual. 
Six, your sharp wit, great sense of humor with a tad bit of snark, and your laughter. Seven, your concern for the good of the order. Eight, your ability to cut through the noise to get to the heart of a problem. Number nine, we can't forget Angie's cookies. And number 10, your inspiring dedication to providing students with an exceptional learning environment. We end the semester with mixed feelings. We're deeply grateful for your mentorship, your friendship, and your support throughout all of these years. We're saddened by your departure, feel a bit of a sense of loss, but we're also tremendously happy for you as you embark on your new post-Drake adventures. You'll always be part of our department. It will be a challenge to begin next semester without you. And in the words of, you know who, we know well, um, we'll clean it up tomorrow. Um, we look forward to your continued friendship. We thank you for everything and we wish you the very, very best. Thank you. Thank you, Maria, and congratulations, Brian. Good, and next, Bill. Yes, uh, hi, I'm actually taking point of privilege over who would normally do this, our department chair, Jim Romaine, um, and I'll explain why I have usurped his authority in just a little bit. But before uh, we do that, I wanna make sure that we all know that uh, Bill has been a crucial part of this department since uh, 1994 when he came here from Plymouth State College in New Hampshire and New Hampshire's loss was very much Iowa's gain. It is very difficult to go ahead and explain the degree to which Bill completely transformed the, the culture and the behavior around the music theory and composition area here at Drake with his arrival in 1994. It, it brought a whole new breath of fresh air through the area and really transformed the attitude and the, and the teaching in this department that is so crucial to the education for literally every single musician that goes through this program. Um, Bill uh, also then very quickly found himself dumped into the administrative fires. He took over as department chair in 1996 serving in that capacity until 2001. And then apparently uh, feeling that he had not been uh, punished enough, stepped up to take over the role of associate dean in 2003, served with uh, great efficacy there until 2007. Uh, sweetening the pot, however, a little bit during that time, he was also named the Ellis and Nell Levitt Professor of Music in 2003, a position which he still holds to this day and for which we are extremely grateful that he has this endowed position to go ahead and um, recognize the effort and the contributions that he has made to our department because they are extremely wide ranging. Uh, he instituted a new music festival here at the university very shortly after he arrived in 1995 that ran for the better part of six years. He established a computer music uh, classroom, setting up a, a classroom dedicated with MIDI uh, technology and computers so that students could have the opportunity to work on compositions, to go ahead and work on advanced theory software that was new coming out today, which made uh, Drake's opportunities to work in music theory really cutting edge for their time. Um, he also completely restructured and, and oversaw the transformation, as I said, of the undergraduate theory program during his time here, streamlining some of the classes that were offered, expanding opportunities in other ways that have led to tremendous leaps forward in both student achievement and student retention over time. And I can speak to this with some authority because I was one of Bill's very first students. He came here when I was entering my junior year as an undergraduate at Drake. And it is difficult for me to personally overstate the degree to which Bill has been an influence and a mentor and had a very powerful impact on my own career. As an active composer, uh, it was fascinating to me to see someone so engaged with the creation of music in an era that I myself had had relatively little contact with in contemporary music. 
as a violinist who had been primarily trained in the romantic tradition, I thought I was, wasn't interested in it. Taking courses with Bill in counterpoint, in structure and design, in post-tonal and 20th century techniques opened me up to an entirely new world of thinking about music that I had never before experienced and hearing his compositions that he wrote for so many members of our department, for the band, for the orchestra, for chamber groups, for his colleagues here, and indeed getting them performed throughout central Iowa and indeed the nation and internationally has been a great experience to see those kinds of active contributions as both a scholar and a creative figure that were of huge impact to me in going forward to become a musical academic. Uh, his compositions have been widely published, recorded, and performed, and as I say, particularly with members of the Drake faculty who have been longtime and enthusiastic collaborators with him. He's also a leading figure in the realm of musical semiotics, presenting and publishing widely in the United States and in Europe and in Asia. Was, this was all came to culmination in 2013 when he was named the Stalnecker Lecturer here at Drake, a real recognition of the place that this university has held in his heart and the importance that it has been that he has been to it over the years. And I would be remiss if I did not also add that it were it not for Bill and his encouragement and his influence and the fact that he has been such a powerful mentor to me, I would not be here today. And I mean that quite literally. When the job came open for the music history position at Drake, I ran into Bill at a conference and he told me I needed to apply for it. I hadn't thought for a second of doing so. And I am so grateful to him for having that faith in me, for mentoring me when I've gotten here and for believing in the capacity of this department, its faculty, and its students to do great things. Bill, you're going to be tremendously missed. I don't know how we're going to get on without you, but I'm sure we'll be able to find you either at the bowling alley or on the golf course and be able to ask you if we need a little help in the future. So thank you so much, Bill. We will miss you so much. Thank you, Eric, and congratulations, Bill. Uh, that is quite an amazing personal connection there too that I had not heard yet. Wonderful. Thank you. Speaking of music, we are moving on to Venita because, um, yeah, just because. Go, go for it, Jim. <laughs> Thanks so much. Actually, before before I before I say a few uh, a few words about Venita, I'm going to add a very short uh, addition to Eric's comment on Bill, um, in the spirit of a more in the spirit of a Dean Martin roast, and that is, um, it it was um, a, a compliment to me in our trip to China in 2015. Uh, I don't recall, Bill, if it was in Beijing or on our side trip to Chongqing, but uh, w when I was asked if I was Bill's son. <laughs> so, Bill, I thought you would enjoy that little story. Okay, onward. Um, so, uh, with all of these are really stunning um, faculty and j remarkable accomplishments, um, sometimes it's easy to forget that there are people who, who make our departments run uh, who are not faculty members. And in this case, uh, I, I want to acknowledge the terrific work of Vanita Svaldi, um, our administrative assistant in the music department, um, who will retire on June 30th. Uh, she began at Drake in 2006, in August 14th, to be precise. Um, she tells me that over the past 15 years, She's especially enjoyed uh, contacts with students through recruiting and also her interactions with current students. Um, I doubt she'll miss too much some of the endlessly growing list of tasks, uh, administrative responsibilities that we seem to, f to, to heap um, uh, on her. Um, in 2018, uh, my colleague Clarence Padilla and I co-authored a a letter of support uh, for Vanita uh, for the Levitt Employee Excellence Award. And so I just wanted to read a couple of lines from that um, from that letter because I, I think it really encapsulates um, our our appreciation for Vanita, um, who serves as administrative assistant um, for the largest department um, in arts and sciences with 23 full time faculty members and about 25 part time adjuncts. Uh, with over 100 performances in our department each year, she supervises the student staff that produces all of the programs for this wide array of faculty, student, and guest recitals and master classes. 
our department has a faculty recruitment coordinator, but all of the day-to-day -day recruitment tasks have fallen to Vanita. The phone calls, the emails, the questions about the audition schedule uh, for audition days, um, et cetera, and the complexity of putting together the schedule for three annual audition days means that she deals with scheduling around 150 individual auditions, communicates with each and every prospective student about their specific scheduling needs, and it requires close coordination with admissions and, and student financial planning, this entire um, process. Uh, she's always extraordinarily cheerful, always willing to help. Um, she offers her own initiative and new ideas to improve processes um, as she knows them best in her interactions with current and prospective students. Um, in short, uh, the department would simply have run off the rails uh, were it not for her exceptional performance, her dedication, her commitment, and her professionalism. We do try to thank her for her daily above and beyond work, um, but I'm afraid it is largely a thankless job, and I'm grateful to have today the opportunity to express our collective appreciation as a department for her 15 years of outstanding work. She will be sorely missed. Thank you, Vanita. Thank you, Jim, and congratulations, Vanita. Great. Next, we are going uh, to Joseph Schneider and Nancy, I think, will do the honor. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Well, it is remarkable to know that Joseph has worked at Drake for over 50 years, but a number alone does not capture what Joseph has accomplished during his time here. Dr. Schneider is the Ellis and Neville Levitt Distinguished Professor of Sociology, a truly deserving honor. This prestigious title, though long, still does not adequately capture what Joseph has meant to students and colleagues over the years. He has improved Drake at all levels in his many decades of service. Joseph has treated people with honesty, fairness, and respect. He values people. Joseph is a man of integrity. No one will exceed Joseph's standard for integrity and his commitment to always doing the right thing, no matter the headaches that may bring. His moral and ethical center can be trusted. His compassion for others and his dedication to serving with the highest standards has benefited countless individuals and Drake as an institution. Professor Schneider was already a legend when I was in graduate school. When my faculty and mentors at the time heard I was going to Drake, they would frequently say, that's where Schneider is. So this is Schneider's house. And Professor Schneider is known and respected for his character, but also his scholarly contributions in areas including deviance and cultural studies. And I still love pointing out to students his research in areas like medicalization and deviance. And when they see Schneider's name in the books they are reading, uh, it's, it's always fun to make sure that they know, yes, this is our Joseph Schneider. When I arrived at Drake over 20 years ago, Joseph was part of this powerhouse in sociology at Drake with Ron Troyer, Dean and Sue Wright, and many others. And what an amazing legacy the sociology faculty have had at Drake. Joseph's knowledge, his experience, dedication, and character have played a pivotal role in giving Drake a strong foundation. His example in leadership, administration, teaching, mentoring, and research is a gold standard. And others would be wise to learn from his legacy that he leaves. His approach to living is also a model for us all. He is curious, he loves learning, he welcomes the close examination of lived experience. And he has other communities that have benefited from his intellectual drive and his love for life, his love for China, his passion for yoga, and now his experience in teaching others yoga. He has family and friends around the world. Joseph's example of living life includes living through hard times too. He was married to his wife, Nancy, for 34 years. When she died in 2006, Joseph allowed others to learn from part of his grieving journey. He modeled the painful relearning of one's world following a loved one's death. His essay on the intimacy of objects in which he shares part of the story of her death and his grieving is one of my favorite articles he has written. Knowing his depth of integrity, character, and ethics has always allowed me and others to trust him. He's able to listen, hear other views, and respect differences. Joseph and I have not always agreed on issues over the years but he believes in transparency and decision-making and uses fairness as a general principle. And when you can trust someone as deeply as I trust Joseph, it creates a solid foundation. And that foundation can withstand trials. 
And I know that there are many others who have that same trust and support and who have gone to Joseph for that help. Professor Schneider has scholarly accomplish accomplishments matching those at any Research One university. He could have moved to other universities, but we are so fortunate that he chose to make his home base here. And though the city he called home did not change for decades, Joseph did not limit himself in place or time as he continually took on new courses to teach, new areas of scholarship and new worlds to visit. Whereas some people who are close to re retirement may coast on well-oiled classes or do little to no research, Joseph set a high standard for us. In the past couple of years, even after knowing he would retire soon, he continued to push himself and his students. Joseph developed a new class, he embraced the sudden move to online teaching, and he also began exploring new areas of scholarship. When I asked Joseph about his plans for after retirement, he shared this. Sort my past life and to keep and throw, which might emphasize the latter. See my friends and family, teach and do yoga, consider what if any academic writing I might pursue, and love my life. Joseph, you leave behind an amazing legacy, not only at Drake, but in the countless lives that you have touched throughout your life. And thank you for giving so much of yourself to all of us. You have so much to love about your life and I hope that you enjoy your retirement. Thank you, Nancy, and congratulations, Joseph. Good, we go on to Art Sanders and Dennis. Greetings from the anonymity of sabbatical, but uh, uh, I was pleased when the Dean asked me to say a few words about art. Uh, in the fall of 1989, the Department of Political Science consisted of four positions, one in American politics, one in comparative politics, one in international relations, and one in political theory. We had been a combined Department of Political Science and Public Administration with eight faculty lines, uh, but the then president of Drake decided to move the public administration people over to the College of Business. With one retirement and a shuffling of lines that fall of, of 1989, looking toward 1990, we were able to hire then for two positions in American politics to add at least one line to our department. Um, one was for uh, American political institutions, Congress, the presidency, and the courts, uh, a position now held by Rachel Caulfield since 2001. The other position is what political scientists call, generally speaking, political behavior, which focuses on political parties and interest groups, uh, the American electoral process, public opinion, politics in the mass media, women in politics, among a host of other things. This latter position was the one that Art filled as of fall 1990. It's a position now held by Greg Wolf. Uh, and Art also served a period as department chair along the way. I always considered, frankly speaking, I always considered Art's move from the, the, the department to the provost's office in Old Maine is certainly a gain for the university, but at the same time, a loss for the department. A recognized teacher and scholar at Drake, Art continued teaching an FYS related section of our introductory course in American politics in the fall and his course on the media and American politics, his specialty, he's published certainly in that area in the spring. More of his time though was devoted over these last number of years to helping to improve the FYS program and foster attention to improving faculty teaching, his various seminars and so forth. Nevertheless, trying to keep to the Dean's stipulation of, of brevity, um, I want to note what one cannot find in a formal record of accomplishments. I, and I think along with my colleagues certainly, have missed his arts official presence in the department. Uh, another faculty member teaching certain courses, engaged in certain research. But we've also missed very much his unofficial shoot the breeze presence in his office and the hallways in Meredith Hall. Uh, uh, we, we could just talk about current political developments, certain issues in politics, issues in our discipline, that sort of unofficial side we've missed tremendously. I myself always trusted in and relied upon Art's academic expertise, certainly in American government and politics, but also his practical common sense knowledge of and interest in politics and his ability to visit my own classroom and give me a good assessment of what I did well and what I needed to improve or tweak in my teaching. 
So to summarize with, uh, with brevity, art made Drake a better place for students and he made it a better place for faculty and staff. We wish him well and we will miss him. Thank you, Dennis, and congratulations, Art. Next is um, Nancy going to do Ramesh. Ramesh is here, I saw him also in the audience. Yes, great, thank you. Ramesh Dusa has been at Drake over 30 years. We were fortunate to have his caring and patient presence, his intellectual experience and his dedicated teaching. Professor Dusa also opened the world to his research and observations of life in his writing and in his legendary stories. Ramesh carried an enormous load of teaching for Drake as he was the only full-time geographer as long as I can recall. His courses served a critically important part of students' programs in our department, but also in areas such as international studies, education, and business. In teaching evaluations, students would consistently write about how much they learned about other cultures in their classes with Ramesh. And even more frequently, they would write about how nice Professor Dusa is. They loved his stories. Students would explicitly comment on how much he loves to teach geography. His passion for his topics were evident his care and compassion for students even more obvious. And what more do we need in the world right now than compassion and awareness of different cultures? Ramesh, you are missed already, as are your classes. Ramesh is a specialist in cultural geography of South Asia, and his research and teaching interests are in literary and humanist geography. One of his main topics is the cultural identity of Anglo-Indians of Eastern India. He is known internationally for his research. Ramesh gives national and international conference presentations as part of his scholarly pursuit. Recently in 2019, back when we could travel, he was invited to give a keynote lecture at the International Conference on Climate Change, Sustainability and Livelihood at Nirmala College in India. Ramesh also writes fiction. He has published a book of short stories and wants to write more fiction. While one can describe his teaching and writing, what is harder to capture in words about Ramesh is the depth of kindness and genuine love he has for others and for life. During some rough days, particularly in my stint as chair, it would not be unusual for Ramesh to pass me in the hallway when I looked maybe tired. He would always take time to say hi and ask how I was. And I know he did this for other people too. And you knew that he really cared. You just, you could tell he would do absolutely anything for you if you could. And we, we will miss that kindness. Recently at one of our department Zoom receptions, Michael Haddock recalled his first time meeting Ramesh. Michael said that before he came to Iowa, he was concerned about whether there would be much cultural diversity in Des Moines, but he came for a job interview. And during that visit, Ramesh took Michael out for dinner. They were at a local Indian restaurant when things really got interesting. Michael recalled at some point in the dinner that Ramesh introduced him to the owner of the restaurant, who also happened to be a distributor of Bollywood films. The restaurant owner and Ramesh started singing classic Bollywood songs to Michael at the table. It sounded like a great evening. Michael was pleasantly surprised to be serenaded by a Bollywood film insider and one of his potentially future colleagues at an authentic Indian restaurant as part of his job interview in Des Moines, Iowa. Ramesh has great stories. Take time to ask him, and he might even sing a song for you if the timing is right. Whether writing fiction, singing, or consulting for a children's geography bee, Ramesh loves to give to other people. Students and colleagues alike enjoy his kindness and stories from around the world. Ramesh loves his family, he cherishes them. Several of us were fortunate to have one or more of his children in our classes while at Drake. Their character, intellect, and depth of kindness reflected the amazing family and culture that Ramesh nurtures. I asked Ramesh about his retirement plans and he shared in part, I'm currently working on finishing a book manuscript tentatively titled Humanistic and Literary Geography of Delhi. I am also trying to finish some other small papers. In my spare time, I also want to read literary works both in English and in Hindi, try to write and finish some short stories, do a little bit of traveling, photography and singing. Ramesh, thank you for your passions, your dedicated teaching, your fascinating writing, and your quintessential kindness. Our world needs more of your caring ways. 
keep singing, keep writing, keep being you, and we hope you enjoy your retirement. Thank you, Nancy, and congratulations, Ramesh. Next is Nancy Reinke, and Beth has prepared some remarks. Hi, everybody. Um, yes, um, this is a personal one for me. Um, Nancy was one of the first people I met when I came to Drake, and she's actually since she has been retired, she's actually on vacation in Wisconsin right now. So she's not here. So I can say whatever I want. Um, but I, I was thinking about for me, and I think for a lot of us, Nancy is as much a part of Drake University as is old Maine. I mean, she obviously hasn't been at Drake that long, but quite a long time. And she won both the Arts and Sciences Teacher of the Year Award and the Levitt Teaching Award. Um, she had an institutional memory or has an institutional memory like no one else that I've ever known. Um, at department meetings, I think often when we needed to know something, we would just look at Nancy and she would know the answer. I don't know how we're going to recover from not having that resource. Um, Nancy's a true educator, not just in the classroom, but I think in every aspect of her life, in every interaction she has. She has so many students whose lives she changed, and a lot of them have gone on to become educators themselves. She always centered her pedagogy on the students. Um, it was never about her, but about them and their learning and their experience. Um, she also did something that I thought was really great and, and I've tried to emulate, but I'm not quite as good at it as she is. She included play in her classroom. She taught a literature of war class pretty much every year. And at the end of the semester, she would bring um, like Nerf guns and other things and the class would have a fake battle. I mean, it just sounded like a lot of fun. Um, I think everybody at Drake probably has a Nancy story. She also is the president of the Iowa chapter of AAUP. And I think she has helped dozens of people through that um, focus. And she, I guess I will just say this last thing about her is that she is the calmest person I've ever known. And I'm like the exact opposite. And so having such a calm presence around has been, I think, something that, that I have appreciated and I know the rest of the English department has appreciated as well. Um, she and her partner have fostered over 120 dogs and that I know that in her retirement, um, she is going to continue fostering dogs and building things because she's a, an avid carpenter and um, I think we're all gonna miss her and I'm gonna miss her very much. And um, I just wish her well and thank her for all her dedication to our school. And I already miss her. So thanks very much. Thank you, Beth. And congratulations, Nancy. I know she can't be here today, but she will, I'm sure, hear about this or get those words. Thank you. Good, and last but not least, uh, Michael Reek and uh, Tim is going to do that. Thank you, Kazina. Um, so one of the hardest things about teaching computer science, in my opinion, is that it changes so fast, right? There's no such thing as cloud computing when we were in college. And so what impresses me the most about Michael is that his PhD is actually in mathematics. And so what I think says a lot about his character is that he was willing to kind of retrain himself in the middle of his career to teach kind of new and cutting edge technology. For many years, uh, he was kind of the department uh, Swiss army knife. He could teach any course on nearly anything at any time during the day when no one else wanted to teach in a classroom uh, that was halfway across campus. So Michael volunteered for these kinds of opportunities with no hesitation. And oftentimes you'd see him like lugging two by fours across campus to set up a robotics table so students could have a hands-on experience. So I don't know if, if Michael drew the short straw a few decades ago when he made the pivot to computer science, but I'm glad that he did because I think that he was able to establish a foundation for computer science and data analytics and artificial intelligence and all those programs to be what they are today. 
We miss uh, many things about Michael. Uh, things that come quickly to mind are his flexibility, uh, generosity of spirits, his compassion for his students, and his ability to take uh, department meetings in very unpredictable yet entertaining directions. Thank you, Michael, for all that you've done for the department and for the university. Congratulations on your retirement. We miss you. Thank you, Tim, and congratulations, Michael. Wow, what a, an amazing group of people who will be leaving a huge hole um, to fill, big shoes uh, to fill here in the college. So thank you. We wish you all the best. And I wanted to show you all, I promise you all that you're also getting, I'm just showing you the last one here, Michael, all of you, congrats, congratulations, Professor Emeritus, this beautiful plaque will be coming to your house. It's in the Dean's office right now and will be um, mailed out after this event. We are so proud of you. We are so ambitious to try to fill the legacy, continue the legacy you, you have left. And we, yeah, we miss you already. I have only had the pleasure to work with you two to three years, but I am amazed also by all those stories. Not surprised, just amazed by all those stories and those um, legacies. Thank you very much. Good, let's move on to, uh, Kayla, if you want to switch the, to the PowerPoint, that's fine. Um, we will have a um, report now from Matt Zwier, who's the incoming faculty uh, Senate president. And so in, uh, he is going to give us a short report of this year's big happenings. There was a lot going on if you have followed Faculty Senate. So um, Matt, uh, thanks for um, volunteering to do this. Thank you very much for Gazina for inviting me. Uh, it is um, immensely humbling to follow all of these tributes uh, to um, well-beloved colleagues, uh, well-deserving of the admiration that's been poured out here and uh, even more uh, than could possibly be said in the time that is here. Um, I am continually humbled to uh, work at such an institution and to call each of you uh, a colleague. So uh, thank you very much for this time. Thank you very much for the uh, trust, uh, the hope that you have shown um, in uh, allowing me to uh, uh, to assume this role this year as faculty senate vice president and faculty senate next year, uh, I hope uh, and pray that I will uh, do you well. Um, to briefly summarize what we have done this year in faculty senate and give a little bit of, uh, of context for what is likely going to happen next year. Uh, so there have been um, uh, several major developments that may or may not have come to your attention based on uh, where, you, uh, where you live in the space of uh, teaching and research. Uh, we started the year with uh, passing motions of support for policies against the use of racial epithets in the classroom and uh, for formalizing a policy on religious accommodation. Um, as I make reference to these policies, uh, I will note that you may find these on the Faculty Senate website under the agendas and meeting information. Um, you have to search a little bit for these things. Um, but in the interest of keeping things brief, I'm only going to talk about uh, the high points of what we discussed. If you're interested in details, please consult these documents or reach out to your senator or to me for more information. Um, so uh, shortly after, uh, so those were probably the um, most important items of direct impact to teaching. Um, subsequent to that, Faculty Senate elected to accept um, the AA degrees from Bright College as fulfilling the Drake AOIs with the exception of the capstone project. Uh, so this involve, allows Bright College students a path to a four-year degree, a natural path to a four-year degree, uh, while still maintaining a capstone requirement that is uh, so essential in defining the Drake experience for our students. Um, probably of uh, most long-term importance, uh, 
at the very last faculty senate meeting last month, um, we constituted an ad hoc committee to review and resolve ambiguities related to the processes of the Academic Freedom and Tenure Committee. Uh, so this is coming uh, in response to uh, concerns from a number of faculty members across the college, including in arts and sciences, uh, and from the provost's office. Uh, so not necessarily that there's anything wrong with what we're doing currently, but uh, it's become clear that uh, the language of the academic charter of the Senate rules and regulations uh, and the procedures themselves of the Academic Freedom and Tenure Committee uh, could stand to be made a little bit more explicit and clear. So that will be a major effort of uh, next year's Senate. Um, additional major efforts for next year's Senate include um, uh, the discussion of implementing a blended advising model, uh, something that would uh, somehow that would lighten the load of current faculty members in their capacity as advisors, uh, lighten the load of people um, like uh, Natalie, uh, Kayla, and Maria in our own college who work so very hard to help our students. Um, uh, this came up for discussion uh, one or two meetings ago, I forget which, and it became clear that uh, some more discussion would be important on that front. Uh, so if you have um, opinions about what that should look like, um, please reach out to your senators to share that, uh, because I expect that to be a vibrant discussion at um, uh, starting early in the fall. Um, probably beginning with uh, the Senate meeting in, uh, on Wednesday, uh, we will continue the discussion of uh, how do we best meet the uh, already elected, um, words are failing, uh, how we uh, meet the already approved learning outcomes uh, in the AOI system, focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion. There is a proposal on the table to uh, revise one AOI and to um, allow an additional designation for other classes. Uh, this is round two of that discussion. We will see if that turns into round three in the fall. Um, again, uh, uh, please share thoughts about that with uh, your senators. Um, and uh, those were the major points of discussion this year. Uh, everything else related to procedural matters about the academic calendar, uh, faculty senate rules and regulations. Um, and so I think that is the best balance of completeness and brevity that I can offer at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt, and that was perfect um, and very informative. Thank you. And thank you to the other senators. a and has a lot of very um, engaged and active senators in those, in, in the faculty senate meetings. Thank you. Good. Um, Brad, would you mind saying just a few words about a and S Council? Um, what kind of some of the main things were? Absolutely. Um, this year I was the vice chair of council um, and that means next year I'll be the chair of council and cabinet. Um, we did a few things. A, a lot of what Council does is is review processes that are already operating at Drake and in, in the college. Um, for example, we approved some majors and minors, some changes to things like art and design and kinesiology. Those types of issues go through council and, and cabinet. Um, we provide oversight to curriculum committee, diversity committee, technology committee. So those types of things also go through through cabinet. Some of the things that we are working on that go oh, will probably go into next year as well. Um, well, well, actually, one thing we did do this year that was a major change to the handbook, we added a new role for the vice chair um, of council, and they are now supposed to go to um, arts and sciences chair meetings in order to facilitate better communication between the chairs and councils. So that's, that's a new thing that we're trying to do. Um, some other things that are happening, we are looking at student evaluations. That's going to be something that 
you know, we're studying them now, how they're work using, used at Drake, how they are being processed. Um, and probably next year, we're gonna try to do some things with that study that we're on right now. Um, we're also currently working on making the language in the handbook regarding promotion and tenure more consistent. Um, we've gone through that document and found lots of inconsistencies, lots of um, potentially problematic areas. And we're just going to try to clean them up and make them a little bit easier to understand. And those are the major things that we've accomplished and are working on for next year. Thank you, Brett. Very good, very good. Wonderful. So next um, is a very quick reminder of our of a big change that is coming and that is Blackboard Ultra. And uh, several people have mentioned to bring that up here so that it's on everybody's radar and not a bad awakening come uh, August 2nd. Mary, are you still there to uh, just do, do a little shout out for Blackboard Ultra? Sure, so most of you saw a presentation by Maria, Jeanette or me about this coming you know, full transition to Blackboard Learn Ultra in your department meetings. So we just wanted to remind you all nine modules walking you through the changes are now available on Blackboard under courses you are taking. And so just to encourage you to get started because it does take a while actually to work through them. So to get started on it. And then once you do that, you know, just to start practicing with your sandboxes because that's where you'll actually start to think, oh, I, this is different, that's different, or I need some more training on this or that. So if you have any questions, or if you want more training as a department or as a group, you know, just let one of us know, um, Maria or Jeanette or me, and, and we can, we don't do the training, don't worry, but we can, we can put you in touch with the right person to help you with that. So thanks, Kazina. Thank you, Mary, and, uh, and everybody who's helping with that roll out and uh, offering mentorship and advice. We will all need it. I know that. Thank you. Good. Let's move on. We are a little bit behind schedule, and I want to make sure that at least we have some time also for our conversation in the end about um, online um, teaching, the good, the bad, and the next steps. So I will keep my Dean's report rather short, happy to follow up with an email uh, on more details. First one, and that slide is important, though I'm not cutting that, and that is um, the next one on admissions. I want to just say, wow, you guys did it. We did it. We really did. I don't know if, if you know the context. So the goal, the budget goal for our incoming freshman class was built on 750 new students in the fall. And as of this morning, 8 a.m., we made it. So as a university, uh, we have 751 confirmed tuition deposited first year students, which is awesome. Of course, we take more. But if you compare that to a year ago, we were at 631. So that's um, a year to date or 712 um, two years prior. I hope these are the updated numbers from this morning. I think so. Good. But then this is what I really want to um, get your attention, uh, have, you, have you focus on, and that is the number for a and S in the second line right under university. We are at 414 first year students. Our goal, the inofficial, the goal for the budget was 307 students in a and S. Our ambitious goal was 390. And today, this morning, we are at 414. And that is in the midst of um, a, recruitment cycle that was completely online or virtual. It's in the midst of a pandemic and in the midst of a major economic crisis and hardship. And so uh, in a crisis in higher ed and the questions about affordability. So this is awesome. And it's uh, because of all the hard work uh, you all did. We had a recruitment plan. It worked. Thanks to the leadership um, uh, of Maria and Natalie, who did really an amazing job coordinating, revising, adding new things and implementing new way ways. They worked very, very closely with all of the chairs who did an amazing job leading department activities, meeting prospective students and their families in the endless academic overviews, spotlight sessions, individual meetings, you name it, it worked. Thank you to all of the faculty, all of you who 
kept um, on the ball, meeting with students, following up with them on any questions they had, showing off your expertise and your commitment to teaching. We know that that is what really gets the student to make that final decision to come to Drake and it worked. So thank you, thank you for all that work on it. Um, chairs, the, uh, the department chairs every Friday get that ominous admission funnel report, the most expected email of the week or highly anticipated email of the week. I don't know if they always share it with you. It doesn't really matter the details of it. What really matters is the number at the bottom because the numbers on that funnel are divided, are, are listed by department. And these departments are in numbers come from when students for first fill out the application that they're interested in Drake. They say they mention one major and then they mention another major and only that first major shows up. So um, it, they don't tell the whole story of why students come or what, stu or what major they will be when they come here. But it's a great way to track, to pull up the pressure, uh, put, uh, put on the pressure to do to ex do some extra social media outreach, etc. So it is a kind of our guide on how to respond. So thank you all for this amazing accomplishment. We are carrying, I may, might want to just say that out here, we are carrying the university enrollment with 414, that's 55% of the income class, first year student class. And historically, we are more in the 40 to 50% uh, range in terms of percentage of that class. So well done. And it's not the final number. May 1st is the deadline uh, for um, the kind of the, but we know, so then that's tomorrow. Uh, but we also know that there's a lot of students uh, so who will still make up their mind over the weekend. In fact, there will be a kind of a visit to campus event tomorrow uh, and more outreach. So I'll keep you posted next week, but we already are doing really, really well. Natalie, are there any questions in the chat about this that I should uh, pause for? The, the chat is quiet at the moment, except okay. for Kayla acknowledging those are updated numbers for this week. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good. Quick other update. Our, the hiring circle a cycle is almost complete for the year. We have complete, com, successfully completed 10 tenure track hires this year. We had two failed searches and one search that is still ongoing. So great accomplishment, great work by the search committees and the departments, very, very busy uh, cycle, um, all of course virtual. And we have 10 new tenure track faculty starting in the fall. We are uh, diversifying our faculty further with four out of 10 um, faculty from uh, diverse backgrounds. So that was a major goal and we are uh, proud to have made some progress towards that. The next cycle has already started, as you know, uh, or is about to start um, with the case statements that were submitted and um, will uh, then, I think by late May, we will uh, have kind of some uh, news there. Good, another uh, quick thing, and then this is my, I might cut this one also a little shorter here, is a fundraising report. I just wanted to say that at first when the pandemic hit about a, um, more than a year ago now, uh, there was a lot of fear and kind of pause, halting of advancement activities. You might know that almost the entire advancement office became a contract tracers, and that was their main activities for several days a week. Um, and all in was, for example, postponed at first twice, etc. But then it picked up quite extraordinarily after that. And in fact, I would venture to say, like in so many areas, we discovered that uh, the virtual platform also opened up new possibilities, new ways of engagement and more frequent ways of engagement with some of our alumni and donors. And so that pace picked really up for the first time we did group kind of Zoom meetings, invited several people into the same meetings. So in a way I can say, looking back at the last two years, last year I probably met with more donors and alumni than the year before when we were in person, just because it was easier in a way to connect to those people. So, and also what we learned uh, is that despite the economic or because of the economic hardships and crisis, donors or alumni in general were more willing to give because they heard of the uh, hardship that students were facing. Um, uh, uh, and so they 
they were very willing and very happy to give. Um, so we created, just as an example, a new Dean's Emergency Fund that is for students with short-term need in the financial support. And we have several, we received several donations into that that were immediately put to good use. Uh, we have several major new sc uh, student scholarships um, uh, that were instituted and that will start paying out uh, for students to come to Drake this fall or next year. Um, then the other thing is, of course, the big idea process. You all, many of you were involved in that at the beginning of it, maybe almost two years ago now, submitted ideas, brainstormed with your colleagues. And then there were uh, over 60 of those were advanced to the next level and then they were grouped. And we have now six really outstanding big ideas. Many of our faculty, many of you as champions involved in these and those, um, six ideas will form the heart, the core of the next fundraising campaign that, that's starting, uh, being launched officially in October. We are in the so-called quiet phase of the campaign, but it's not that quiet anymore. Uh, there have already um, been quite some activities. So these big ideas, I have, um, I have some slides. And if I, with big apologies to the, champions if you could just say maybe one word one sentence about the idea and then we can follow up later on each of those big ideas but not uh, too much because we do want to get to online teaching so center for public democracy several people here on uh, in the in as are very very involved with that renee can you just do really a one sentence spiel on this one where we are at or and what this is all about i can do one long sentence um <laughs> democracy has been building on the capacities of the arts and sciences, especially the departments of political science and American politics and law, politics and society, as well as the law school, Drake's uh, School of Journalism and Mass Communication, and some of our partners in the College of Business and Public Affairs, as well as with the Harkin Center, Vote Smart, and the Ray Center, all of which are coming together to collaborate on helping us maintain our reputation and build our reputation as a robust center for the learning of practices of democracy. Fantastic. Yeah, that's really good. That's the, the big idea, uh, Center for Public Democracy. Thank you, Renee, and the other champions and supporters, uh, activists in this group. Good. Next one is, I think, what's the next one, Kayla? What did I put next? Okay, digital literacy and innovation. Tim, do you have a very short spiel, short version of your sure. spiel? Sometimes this is called the digital proficiency platform. And the idea is about uh, providing an educational foundation for students that incorporates technology alongside things that Drake does well, like curiosity, communication skills, critical thinking, teamwork in the context of a rapidly changing digital world. So one of the big ideas in the digital proficiency platform was to provide scholarships for women and minorities to come to Drake to study technology, to make Drake a 50-50 school where 50% of the tech degrees are awarded to women or minorities. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, great idea. Lots of people involved in this one, also from A&S and our departments are majorly involved. Computer science, data analytics, etc. Thank you. Next one, John, do you, do you want to say something about performing arts and student life, the university center? Or maybe he had to go. John. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. I know you have to spunk tonight. So go, go for it. University Center, which is a combined idea between the uh, complete update and upgrade of the uh, Olmstead Center and the construction of a brand new performing arts center. My one sentence is, there is an absolutely critical need for this big idea as other colleges and universities in the region advance beyond us in these areas and draw potential students away from Drake University. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, very exciting, very ambitious and very possible that we will make some headway on this one in this next big campaign um, that has already kind of started. Good, thank you, John. And then we have, um, what's next, Kayla? Ding Darling Institute. Uh, so several of uh, A&S faculty and departments are involved in this. Keith Somerville, who um, is in the fields right now, uh, can uh, will be the director of the Ding Darling Institute. It is really to, this idea is to bridge 
the rural and urban um, divide to bring uh, the can bring the rural areas closer to Des Moines to build bridges and revitalize. So again, here also scholarships for students from rural communities are a big part of this fundraising push, but then also research experiential learning opportunities in the agricultural, uh, rural food um, industry. That's the Ding Darling Institute. And then the next one is the intergenerational campus. And that idea goes along the lines of really providing, making Drake a center for early, from first, you know, kindergarten or even pre-K through um, a senior um, education. And that includes ideas such as uh, um, senior housing on campus or on university property. The race society is of course already um, a big part of that. And then at the other end, we have the Girls and Boys Club, we have Head Start. And so the idea is to, to really become an anchor institution for um, the education of all ages. Very uh, radical and forward looking idea as well. And then last but not least, we have the Change Maker Campus. Neil Ward um, is from INS, one of the champions in this idea. And I don't think he's here anymore. Um, so we, I, is there anybody else still on the call who is involved in this idea? Anyway, it's kind of um, a lot of innovative ideas, the idea of social engagement, making, cam making Drake uh, the place and an activist for change making. In fact, there's a dedication. Uh, if we, uh, if we may meet certain marks, everything from engagement in the, in, in the community, internships, uh, experiential learning and social activism, then uh, Dre can become, um, get the distinction of a change maker campus. And this idea will um, support that and uh, advance that forward. Those are the six ideas. Very briefly, um, they are, have been vetted already and there's publicity out there and people are responding to those ideas very um, strongly and very enthusiastically. It will uh, position Drake as, a, as bringing about change to uh, the community beyond Drake. I know there's a lot of comments in the, Nelly, do you want to um, summarize those? or say something but yeah yeah, to... yes there, there is a, there is discussion um, initiated by uh, Rene um, about the, the big ideas those are very short presentations here but those who are interested in more detail she invites people to uh, to reach out and to be to be more involved um, and um, yes uh, sharing PDFs about the big ideas if if people are interested. That's the gist of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, so the P. So it is the quiet phase, but it's not that quiet anymore. And so the PDFs we asked John Smith, they can be um, shared now, and they have more information. Those are really nice uh, flyers that then also list very specifically the ideas, the, strength, the, the, the opportunities that this I, uh, big idea will promote, the philanthropic prospects. The main thing about these um, projects is that they are really building on the strengths that we already have, like the performing arts, the political democracy, um, the public democracy initiatives, et cetera. And then, uh, so th that's what these flyers uh, that we can send out it will give, and they will give you a nice idea of what the goal is and what will be fundraised for. Yeah, yeah, I know this is in, in not enough time to go over this. I would be happy, and um, if we had a meeting just to, you know, update. Oh, there they are in the, the PDFs. I see are in the chat now. If we had a meeting, just uh, an update on um, those. The launch date of the campaign is October, and there will be kind of a big university event around that. This. Um, is kind of a peak preview, um, uh, and and I thought it would be a nice place to get everybody uh, on the same page there. Good. So online teaching, um, 
that has, of course, been the reality for at least part of our teaching this year. Uh, it was a heavy lift um, that, uh, that was quite successful in some ways. In others, we have learned a lot and know how to do it differently if we had to do it again. So I wanted to use this time here today to um, share some of you know, the worst and the best. And one way to structure that with 80 plus people was the idea of this Padlet. Um, so I was, uh, and a lot of people have uh, commented on the Padlet. Kayla, do you want to pull that up as a click on the link and then pull it up so that people can look at it while I'm identifying some of the trends? Um, what worked? Uh, was one of the, uh, there were a lot of comments and then people uh, liked uh, some of the ideas and commented on it again. Natalie, can you just say a couple of trends though of, of what you saw there? Um, of course, I, I got, I got a, a good part, right? Great. Um, so um, th there are some, some trends that, that I've noticed in, in those comments that you shared on, on the Padlet. And uh, one big theme was the idea of um, technology allowing for more convenient sharing, whether it was sharing of the recorded lectures, sharing of the documents or screens during um, advising times, sharing performances in theater and music through streaming, sharing PowerPoint presentations and using audio and video um, sources without struggling with classroom technology. This is something I'm personally not looking forward to in coming back to teach in person or sharing experiences by inviting speakers and presenters and specialists from other places, bringing in multiple voices in the classroom or sharing feedback with, with your students. I'm taking note of voice memos on Blackboard in particular, sharing timelines for assignments, deadlines, all of all of that. Um, this discussion about sharing and how it sort of shaped um, what we were doing and how brings me to a, a sort of a monumental task that we all faced this semester in teaching, cultivating an, a sense of, of a community, right? And some pointed to, to some positives in, in how technology allowed us to do that with for instance, recorded self intro videos. Uh, working in groups was also mentioned both in positives and in negatives. Um, among the positives, what I, I've seen in your comments in, in particular was this special attention to engaging students in, um, in different ways that we do in the classroom and hearing students' voices um, either through the chat functions or through um, nonverbal types of communication, through polls, padlets, emojis, um, allowing um, quieter students to participate or to react to the material or um, ask questions through those means. Um, another big positive, again, that was mentioned sort of both as a positive and, and, and a negative, this perceived um, convenience and flexibility for faculty and for students in attending a remote class or having remote office hours. Um, so um, I'm probably missing on, on some great points here. This is in very general broad strokes. Thank Can you. Can I just no. say about my, my, one of my favorites? Um, one of my personal highlights on, on Thursday afternoons was uh, listening to Andy Klassen's jazz band rehearse outside of FAC in good weather. Yeah, I really enjoyed That's that. Too. Yep, yeah. you have a privileged place there. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. What didn't the bad? Maria, do you want to just say a few things that were the winners there? Or the losers, the biggest losers? Well, I found five main themes. Um, the first one relates to engagement. Um, some students were engaged. Um, at times it was difficult, and I, I can and I can say that was difficult for us to 
really know if they were there, really know what they were doing. And something that caught my attention, someone said multitasking to a new level. And I, <laughs> it seems that as students said, um, they were present uh, in a, you know, at a particular class and at the same time doing coursework for a different class. So actually students are saying, well, how are we going to do this next semester? Because obviously uh, that multitasking, it will be very hard. Um, it was very interesting, one of the comments about time management. Maybe that will have an impact on time management, you know, uh, simply because uh, that is something that they didn't practice uh, during this year. Um, regarding again, engagement in a class and the atmosphere, we as teachers need the feedback from the students. So not having, you know, having a black screen and name, it was kind of hard to know what they were doing or they were really understanding. So very difficult for us to engage or to communicate to, to know what's, what's going on in the class. The other one was related to hands-on experiences. And that has a great effect or impact, negative, I would say, on the sciences and in the arts in particular. Um, so the worst thing that they couldn't, we couldn't really reproduce in an online environment. The third was is related to personal connections. Uh, so that's, I like to see the, the human factor, you know, we as teachers and I guess students, need to see the student, need to be able to connect with them. And, and uh, it's kind of hard, to, hard, difficult to create that community. Um, the fourth, I guess, relates to testing. Uh, testing was a challenge. And that creates uh, for students as well, apparently respondents, what it has been used, the student didn't really like it. And then the, the fifth, I guess, relates to more the difficulty of having to teach online and in person and complications with internet. And sometimes, you know, Zoom wasn't working or the internet wasn't working. So those kind of the brief summary of what I found. Yeah, thanks, Maria. Yeah, lots of uh, interesting comments there. So for what to keep, what are the next steps now? What to keep and how we can do that? I would say here really uh, the, some things uh, that the winners that we can actually also do are such things as virtual office hours. I think they've got 22 votes total. There were several comments on those and 20, and 20 or so likes. Uh, virtual office hours just um, increased accessibility, spon um, spontaneous, it was very spontaneous and easier to organize, people said. And then last but not least, especially advising in those virtual office hours or virtual advising in general was so much easier is what several people said. And I think that we can keep, right? I mean, those are, it doesn't take much uh, to uh, keep doing that um, in the future. Then a live streaming of music and theater productions was another one, even though it was also mentioned that some of these things didn't work. There were technical problems, there were, but overall, in a way we were forced and we invested heavily in live stream technology. We had larger audiences than we had in the past for some of our performances. There were some losses, you know, um, you know, performers need applause, right? And uh, I know tonight there's another, in, in, these days, several days in a row now, we have a theater performance where the, the actors are in one room on the stage and the audience is, the, is in the other and it's screened over to the other room. So it's still like going out to theater, but it's not that the, or the, um, the same relationship where the actors and actresses can see the audience, but still, we're keeping some of the live stream and we have the equipment so it shouldn't be too hard to continue doing that. Sharing of course materials and Natalie talked about that as a big plus. Um, so that's also I think something we can keep doing um, even when we are in a classroom, if we can share the screen uh, 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 there, that's, uh, that's a possibility. I mentioned virtual advising. Another big winner, winner was flexible course policies. And I think that's really something that I certainly learned and I know others have learned. 
in the past, I would insist so often on, you know, deadlines and certain ways of doing it. And this year, when everything was so hard, uh, we were a lot more flexible with our students, with our, uh, you know, it allowed us to focus on the learning outcomes and the way we get there really doesn't matter, right? And so a lot of um, learned there. So that's also something I think we can keep doing. Finally, the collaboration that Natalie talked about, these online spaces cr created amazing ways to um, do online writing, feedback, problem solving projects, um, programming, um, et cetera. So I think those are things we can uh, keep as um, as well. Oh, there's a um, good, but we wanted to have some time also for this chat here, last three minutes. So Natalie, can you, um, there's some, some big comments related to exactly that, I think. Yes, um, Renee, um, rather than me um, voicing, voicing your big important comment, uh, would you mind um, unmuting yourself and, and um, tell sure, me? I just didn't want to take up time from, from hearing about arts and sciences, but yes. So Provost Madison is charging three of us with leading some working groups on what Drake will look like post pandemic. Mm -hmm. Vanessa Macro is leading one on what work will look like primarily for staff. Melissa Sturm Smith and Jerry Parker are looking at mental health primarily for students, but not only. And I am going to be convening a group on post pandemic academic life. So teaching, learning, research and service. If you are interested in serving in any capacity on that committee, please email me. I will ignore your email until um, I have submitted final grades and then I'll get back to you. And we will be presenting our very preliminary work on this at the Learning Symposium, which is August 20th and has the theme of return. So we're going to really be understanding that there are tensions and joys involved in returning after the pandemic, after losing colleagues, and after the aftermath of, of several social justice and political crises. So let me know if you want to help. Thanks, Natalie. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, Renee. That's good because also, I mean, and I would think this, uh, feel free to keep posting to this Padlet and then that might be something that might also uh, be helpful for that group, you know, already kind of a brainstorming on on what, you know, the perception was on, on what worked well, what didn't, but and, and on the things that we want to keep and how to do that. Um, yeah, so that would be really awesome. And I think that's one way to to start. In addition to these working groups, there's also a discussion that needs to happen university-wide really about online programs. Is there a place uh, for keeping classes, some of the classes or class options online? Um, I know uh, that there we, for, for the fall now where we have the um, promise to be back in person, we also left on the schedule like one or two sections of the most impor um, uh, important science labs, for example, or gateway classes for remote students. But so far we have very few enrolled in those. Um, but we, we, maybe that is something that we need to keep for the future to allow non-traditional students, to allow students uh, who can't afford to move here and live on campus. So those are other discussions that we need to have. And even I've been starting a discussion also with um, Kathleen and uh, SJMC and Alejandro about maybe a new niche um, major or program that is entirely online that does not compete with existing ones. And I know some of you faculty have already um, been supportive of the idea to explore that further and what that would look like on the curriculum. Um, level at the curriculum level yeah thank you Kayla you can go back one more time to everybody that we can see uh, each other having a conversation uh, uh, about this with every with, with so many people is hard we I hope this was helpful and informative and it was certainly um, beautiful to hear all the tributes and contributions from all of you um, to hear the goodbyes to some of those who have been with us for so long. It's a great honor and pleasure to be working with all of you. Um, I want to say thank you to the, the whole faculty. And I want to say this was an amazingly difficult, but also an amazingly rewarding semester. I'm so proud of how 
how it played out in arts and in the arts and sciences. Um, I look forward to seeing everybody um, as we come back over the summer. And um, yeah, thank you for all you've done. It has been really an amazing year. Thank you, thank you, everybody. <laughs>